Hello, I'm Jeff Walker. Welcome to today's webinar entitled Emotions, Muscles and Movement with Dr. Roy Sugarman. Dr. Sugarman is the Director of Applied Neuroscience at EXOS, or formerly known as Athletes Performance. In his professional capacity, he is a clinical neuropsychologist, a clinical psychologist and an internationally recognised expert in optimising brain performance. With decades of experience working with corporate and field athletes, Dr. Sugarman brings an objective approach to the management of mindset. He advises on how to measure and how to improve performance. As well as this, Roy's private practice, Level 7 Psychology, is located in the Sydney suburb of Rose Bay. Dr. Sugarman is the author of two widely acclaimed books, the first titled Saving Yourself One Day at a Time, Seven Ways to Survive the Modern World, and secondly, the motivation for coaches and personal trainers, engaging and retaining people in positive behavioural change, which is now in its second edition. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome Dr. Roy Sugarman to the call. Thanks. Hello, Roy. How are you doing? Hi, Jeff. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's great to be here. Now, I know I've covered a minuscule amount of the things that you do. I know um, there's a couple of other very important roles that you play. Would you mind just detailing those? Sure. Well, you know, there are three arms to um, EXOS. Uh, the first was athletes' performance, which is uh, really training elite athletes across the world at the Olympic and international national level, club level as well, in you know, a wide range of sports and uh, Olympic pursuits. Um, the second arm is called core performance. Um, if you've got any Sheraton hotel in the world, you'll see their gyms and their stuff you'll see on the TV in the room is all really aligned to what we do in corporate work uh, with companies such as Google and Cisco and IBM and Intel and a whole range of other big international corporate groups, uh, both here in Australia and in America. And then the third arm is uh, a tactical performance group. We're the preferred provider for the United States Special Operative Command, um, which includes the Marines and the 101 Airborne and Fort Bragg and everyone else. So there's a great deal of work there. As well as that, I sit on the advisory board of Mind Experts International, which is how we work in psychology and psychotherapy across channels such as webinars and um, Skype and other technology. I'm also the, uh, the director of a public company which provides gambling software across the world, of course not in America where it's illegal largely, but um, the, the company is called Delray Resources and um, part of my work is helping gamblers uh, not blow all their money in one go and to keep them motivated to keep on gambling without hurting themselves because they do anyway. And then finally I'm on the advisory board of QUVE which is a, a group that provides electronic media for personal trainers and coaches to track their clients across the 165 hours a week when they're not in the gym and to keep them aligned and focused and returning and build their practices. I do a few other things besides that. I'm a director of Life Ally International out of Singapore. We do online wellness solutions for the Singapore military and for Aviva International, which is a very big insurance company. You've seen their logos on various sports teams across the world. And I'm also a clinical lecturer at the University of New South Wales in discipline psychiatry in the School of Medicine. So apart from a few other things, that pretty much covers what I do. And if you ask me what I do in my spare time, well, I, in my spare time, I dream of having spare time. <laughs> I can understand that. Now, I've watched you from afar uh, for many years, not in, not in a, a weird way, uh, but as a keen observer. And I was delighted to meet you at one of our conferences a couple of years ago, the one that um, Ian O'Dwyer presented at. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. yeah. I've always been fascinated with the way that you articulate what I know, or and more often you articulate the very things that I should be doing. I see you as like my subconscious, but in a flesh and blood <laughs> version. <laughs> yeah, so That's it's a uh, right tip. Yeah. Yes. I guess what we'll have to get out of the call today is talking about the role of healthcare professionals and I guess in some regards we'll be covering things like emotions and stress and three-dimensional movement. First and foremost, uh, you being an applied neuroscientist, uh, what is the purpose of neuroscience in sports? And I know you do this at an elite level, a very elite level, but how does this translate you know, down to, say, an under-15 girls soccer team? Yeah, well, certainly. Uh, and I've trained under-15 girls soccer teams as well, and especially um, <laughs> goalkeepers in soccer. Okay. Um, and boys as well, for that matter. Girls are, are easy if you can get them to stop talking to each other and pay attention, which is very difficult because <laughs> they socialize a lot better. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just easy to get them to play netball on the field and forget them kicking the damn. Yes, but, oh, um, I've done that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you know, um, most of the work we do when we're working with people is we, we stick to the science of what has been going on for a few hundred years and the science has all been directed at the body because we don't have any or haven't had any real good way of looking at the, the human brain. Freud obviously started his work dissecting brains and a neurologist and his dissections written in German now translated by Mark Soames into English are brilliant dissections of the human brain and fiber systems and we forget that the brain in fact is not separate to the human body. 
when we're looking at a human being, we're making a fundamental error, which is we're seeing them as a physical creature, whereas in fact they're not. And if we are seeing them as a physical creature, and they are, then we are neglecting the brain, because the brain is an intimate part of the human body. And when you're dealing with the body, you're dealing with its directional system, which is the brain. And if you're dealing with the directional system, its only source of nutrition, power, energy, and emotion is the human body. I mean, forget that emotions don't live in the brain, they live in the body, and that it is the perception of emotions that gets through from the human body to the brain, which we call feelings, which begins to influence performance at a conscious level. But nevertheless, the vast majority of stuff happening when we're watching someone, an athlete or a client of some description, is actually happening in their body, but dramatically linked to their brain, and it's all about the emotions. If we look at serotonergic pathways, they're created around the stomach area, around the enteric nervous system, which is the biggest part of the autonomic. Everything we look at, which we think is physical, is driven and connected to the human brain. And unless we actually coach the brain or deal with the brain in terms of dealing with what the body produces for the brain and how the brain guides the body, then we are missing out as coaches, personal trainers, physical therapists. And the simple reason is that nearly everything that's processed in our brains is actually pre-processed by emotions processed by physical organisms in the brain and is subject to the same laws of all of nature. What applies to the brain applies to the body. So you cannot not coach emotion if you're coaching a physical body and you cannot not deal with feelings and emotions when you're coaching a physical body and subsequently at the higher level you're dealing with thinking human beings who modify their feelings, who modify their behaviors, who modify their emotions and consequently, you cannot just train a body. You're training the brain, which is an intimate part of that whole network. To neglect neuroscience is to completely deny reality. It's psychotic. I hope that answers that. Talking to psychosis, 15-year-old girl soccer team, um, <laughs> if you understand the developmental stages that these teenagers are going through, and if you understand how their hormones and how their brains and how their bodies integrate into a series of ecosystems, then you can begin to train them effectively and learn how female goalkeepers are very different to male goalkeepers and how the rules have changed across the, the world driven by applied mirrors. Okay, yeah, I recall uh, you're speaking about the three levels of emotion that you need to consider, the level that you're allowed to see and then two levels that were a bit more hidden and uh, that tapping into those was important to get the best out of anyone. Yeah, and even Freud understood that. He said there's an id ego and super ego. And the id he was referring to was those very deep amygdala-based, insula-based emotions that he could find those deep fiber tracts in the brain, even though he didn't understand how memory and, and uh, emotion are linked. And then, of course, he understood the kind of the ego, which is really our feelings and how we interpret the physical sensations of our bodies. And that's a very inaccurate science. And then finally, the, the superego driver, which is the cortex, which is our thinking and how we can react. We, we can't change our emotions. We can certainly adapt to our feelings and use our thoughts to improve outcomes and, and it's a timeline. So our emotions are active within 100 or 200 milliseconds of our perceiving something but that's very non-conscious and it only begins to emerge into working memory at about 300 milliseconds and by the time we're actually thinking about something we really are, let's put it so our thoughts are janitorial. They're cleaning up 90% of what's happened in the very early stages of our thinking and what that tells us is that when you are coaching emotion, you're dealing with human thoughts, but everything that's being processed is pretty much non-conscious, and then we're just cleaning up the mess that our emotions and, and feelings and, and uh, those deep issues have created for our body and brain. And they're reflected in a whole range of responses right throughout the physiology of our body, and they have to be represented. So we can get people with very minor injuries who have catastrophic responses and feel pain everywhere. And that can be very difficult to treat, but the root of this is, of course, emotion. Okay, well, that, that was a very interesting distinction between the fact that you, you have emotions, but you can't change them, but that you can change the feelings related to those emotions. Certainly, because emotions are non-conscious, and we have biases that we live with, and we can be hardwired to the negative, which is very useful, because mm. that helps prevent us from, from making terrible errors, and it's, it, can, it results in, in so 